50 with a 7 furlong event for two year olds. All three ran, there were no changes. The 4 to 7 favourite here was number 2, West Vermont. And the starter's orders, they're off. For the Carden Stakes, the graduation race over seven furlongs. West Vermont, the early leader, goes on from well appointed in Panchalita. And racing down towards the first turn, having completed the first furlong, it's West Vermont who races wide of the rails, uh, leads by about a length and a half. From well appointed, Panchalita runs the rails, disputing second as they straighten out over on the far side. Just about completed two furlongs now with uh, West Vermont setting a pretty good gallop on the far side there by about a length and a half from well appointed who races wide of Panchalita. Racing down towards the half mile point now with West Vermont still there by about a length and a half from well appointed and Panchalita as they continue down the far side. West Vermont, this Southern winner takes them along still by a length and a half from Panchalita towards the inside of Well Appointed. Nothing to choose between these two as they race half halfway and in fact they've got just under three furlongs left to go. West Vermont and Steve Cawthon still by a length from Panchalita beginning to be ridden along on the rails. Well Appointed races wide and begins to pick up ground as they come towards the home turn. Quarter of a mile left to run. West Vermont by about a length still from Panchalita towards the inside in the red jacket coming on the stand side is well appointed racing down towards the final furlong now West Vermont maintains the advantage here comes well appointed on the stand side West Vermont from well appointed is going to be a battle to the blind West Vermont looks as though he's got something in reserve from well appointed West Vermont Steve Cawthon just hands and heels he's going to win it easily West Vermont from well appointed Panchalita third first number two West Vermont four to seven favourites and second number one well appointed three to one Onto the 220 race, a six furlong event again for juveniles. All nine lined up and there were no changes. Favoured on the off at three to one was number two, Confronter. And the starter's orders, they're off. And they break pretty well, apart from Northern Graduate towards the outside, very slowly into his stride. So through the first furlong, up towards the inside, Majors Lauren the Warrior blaze the trail by two from Confronter. And after this, Honey Heather, Lift Boy comes next, bold mood towards the outside. Then up towards the inside, Esprit 4 begins to make a forward move. The two back markers, Northern Graduate, and one in front of him, Marcus Jack. Having completed two and a half furlongs over on the far side of the track, and still make it measures law from the Warrior, then Confrontar and Honey Heather. There's a gap of a length back after that to Esprit 4 and Lift Boy and Bold Mood. Marcus Jack runs the rail, and Northern Graduate outpaced at this stage. Two and a half furlongs just about left to run. Majors Law, the worry, with Confronter and Honey Heather moving up towards the outside. There's going to be four in the line as they make the home turn now with a quarter of a mile left to run. Majors Law sticks to the rail. Why did this one Confronter and Honey Heather into the home straight now? Majors Law, Honey Heather, Confronter, and it's now Majors Law from Confronter. And then Esprit 4 comes to the late run, but racing down towards the distance marker now. And up towards the inside is Majors Law, who's clear by two from Confronter and Esprit 4 and Honey Heather and racing down well inside the final furlong Majors Law hangs on to a narrow lead Majors Law races to the line Majors Law is well clear at the line from Esprit 4 and Confronter and then honey, back and forth is Honey Heather First number 4 Majors Law 5 to 1 second number 2 Confronter the 3 to 1 favourites and third number 7 Esprit 4 at 6 to 1 in a 250 race all 12 lined up and there were no changes one overweight notice here, Kevin Darley put up three pounds extra on number 11, Poo Wee. Number one, Arany started 11 to 2 favourite. And the starter's orders, they're off. For the Tarkley's Tarpley Stakes, over seven furlongs, quickly away towards the inside, Cape Pigeon, Colway Dominion. Wide of these, execution only, wider still to Poo Wee and Langtree Lady, and with this one, Causley. And racing through the first uh, furlong or so and just completed. Causley just about takes it up now from Colway Dominion towards the inside. Racing wide is Poo Wee. Then comes Langtree Lady and Cape Pigeon and execution only at Arany. And outpaced at this stage, CJA and Sharp Alto. Over on the far side, two furlongs or just a little bit more completed. And Colway Dominion setting a strong pace from Causley in second place. A length and a half back after that to Cape Pigeon running the rail. Wide of this one, Langtree Lady. Aaron has made a lot of ground towards the leaders. Poo Wee also out there towards the far side of that group. Further back to Zisco begins to improve. 
Execution only begins to beat a retreat. Sharp Alto is making ground. Miranda Jay's outpaced, and so is CJA. Half past halfway now in the Tarpley Stakes, and Causley's got the call from Aaron. He makes ground towards the outside. Colway Dominion loses ground on the inside, and Corn Futures makes rapid progress towards the leaders as they race towards the quarter mile marker. Causley towards the inside. Colway's Fortress. Sharp Alto towards the outside begins to improve towards the outside and it's Sharpalto wide towards the stand side who comes through to take it up now. Sharpalto from Causley Colway Dominion fights back so does Cape Pigeon but it's Sharpalto who's burst two clears they race inside the distance now Sharpalto beginning to tie up in front being hard to be catched by Langtree Lady. Sharpalto from Langtree Lady and Corn Futures Sharpalto tying up in front from Langtree Lady. Sharpalto from Langtree Lady will the line come in time? Sharpalto from Langtree Lady and Corn Futures back in third First, number five, Sharp Alto, 12 to 1. Second, number eight, Corn Futures, also at 12 to 1. And third, number two, Langtree Lady, at 8 to 1. In the 3.20 race, a non-runner was number three, Arabian Bold, leaving nine runners and there were no changes. Favourite here at 4 to 1 was number eight, Chatham Island. And the starter's orders, they're off. For the Frodsham handicap, over a mile and a quarter. Green Tavern won the first to go on with Knife Box. Arthur Raab comes next. Eastern Magic runs the rails, then Good Profile. After these, uh, Jungle Knife racing wide. Lockie hangs on the rails. West Home and towards the stand side, Chatham Island. Those are the nine runners as they make their way past the stands and a really strong gallop as they make their way up past the judge with a circuit before them. Green Turban from Knife Box. Eastern Magic runs the rail in third. Althar Ab towards the outside of Good Profile run the inner. Chatham Island goes uh, wider still, then Lockie and Jungle Knife and West Home. So they make the turn with just over seven furlongs left to run and uh, Green Turban continues to take them along by about half a length now from Knife Box towards the outside, Eastern Magic running the rail. Then Altharab racing wide with West Home and Chatham Isle. Then Good Profile makes ground towards the leaders. Lockie is the back marker now. Jungle Knife begins to improve. Onto the far side and uh, racing down towards the halfway point in this Frodsham handicap. And Green Turban continues to take them along from Knife Box. Eastern Magic on the rails and wide of this one still is Good Profile. Up towards the outside, Chatham Island continues to improve. And all nine in with a chance as they race round on the far side with four and a half left to run. On the inside rail still, Green Turban is there. Wider this one, Knife Box. Wider still is Al Tharab. Then after this being ridden along towards the outside, Chatham Island. Then towards the inside, Good Profile. Lockie begins to pick up Eastern Magic. And now Jungle Knife outpaced as they pass the three fellow marker. Up towards the instar, still Green Turban's there with Knife Box towards the outside. These two have made every yard of it so far. They're still clear by a length, length and a half from Lockie and after this good profile. Towards the inside, Eastern Magic and Jungle Knife as they start to make the turn towards home. A furlong and a half left to go. Knife Box for the first time just begins to show ahead in the maroon jacket in the centre. Green Turban drops back to be second. Lockie runs on. After this one comes Good Profile. Eastern Magic tries to get in the run. And here comes Jungle Knife picking up from the back. Racing well inside the final furlong now and it's knife box is well clear knife box is gone five or five lengths clear up towards the line knife box is going to win it from locky it's going to be very close to me and knife box locky and close for third between eastern magic and good profile first number four knife box 11 to two second favorites and that win gave steve Cawthon his 100th winner of the season second number nine locky eight to one third number two good profile at six to one in the 350 race, all five lined up and there were no changes. Number one, Kent, started 11 to 8 favourites. Under starters' orders, they're off. For the Heswell graduation stakes, a mile and a half the trip. In the early stages, another Bob, Kent's towards the inside, Uluru up towards the outer. These are the leading, uh, these are the leading three. Icky Banner and Bucky and Band dispute uh, last place at this stage. So through the first uh, furlong and a half or so, and Kanks takes them along now by about a length and a half from Uluru. Two back after that to another Bob and a similar distance then to Icky Banner who races wide at Bucky and Band. Into the home straight on this first circuit. Uluru and Steve, uh, Kansk, I should say, and Stephen Cawthon take them along by a length and a half from Uluru in second place. Then after this comes another Bob and Icky Banner and Bucky and Band as they make their way up past the enclosures a complete circuit before them. Kanks by two now from Uluru in second place. Then another Bob and Icky Banner and Bucky and Band as they race past the judge. 
Kansk by a length and a half just now as they go into the paddock turn from Uluru on Pared Just uh, switches this wide looking for slightly better ground. A gap of two back after that to another Bob and two further back to Icky Banner who races wide at Buckingham Band. Out onto the far side, seven furlongs left to go in this Haswell graduation stakes. And Kangson, who Steve Cawthon looking for a three-timer this afternoon, still leads by about a length from Uluru, who goes up towards the outside on the Pat Edry. Then Willie Carson, another bob sitting close there back in third. Paul Edry, I should say. And uh, another bob sitting there back in third. And after this, Buckingham Band is four and up towards the outside, Icky Banner five. So out on the far side, past halfway, Ten still has the lead. From Uluru, then another Bob, and Icky Banner improves into four. Bucky and Band just drops back a length or two off the pace as they continue down the far side. Just about half a mile left to run now, and Uluru for the first time shows in front up towards the outside of Kansk, who's being ridden along. They're about three clear then from another Bob, who in turn is two clear from Icky Banner, who begins to close with every stride as they pass the three marker. Uluru has now gone a length and a half to the good from Kransk in second place, then a length and a half back after that to another bob and then Icky Banner who makes ground all the time down towards the final quarter mile now and into the home turn with Uluru still in a three to four length advantage still looking for the better ground and racing wide Icky Banner has gone the shortest way around the rails and is closing all the time it's Uluru racing towards the stand rail Icky Banner up towards the inside it's a battle between these two as they're inside the distance now but Uluru and Pat Edry are well clear by some four to five lengths and Uluru and Pat Edry streak up towards the line Uluru is going to be the easy winner. Uluru at the line now from Icky Banner. It's going to be close for third between Kansk and another Bob. So Uluru there, very impressive, winning by eight lengths in the 350 at Chester yesterday afternoon. Welcome change of fortune there for Barry Hills. Things not been going too right for Barry in the last two or three weeks. We'll be back with the uh, final event at Chester yesterday afternoon, the 420. Again, a very impressive performance to watch out for here. But stand by now, we've got latest news on this afternoon's 450 early price race from Newbury. <laughs> Three changes then, 450 at Newbury. Number 13 on the race card, Gondo, is now 10 to 1. Gondo now priced at 10 to 1. Number 14, Bala Secret, is now 14 to 1. Bala Secret, 14 to 1. And number 19 on the race card, Divine Pet, now 25 to 1. Divine Pet, 25 to 1. So that's the latest news then, 450 at Newbury this afternoon. Gondo is 10 to 1, Bala Secret 14 to 1, Divine Pet 25 to 1. Well, just to say very shortly, we'll be speaking to Colin Brown, of course, Colin's old mate, Desert Orchid, back in action at Wincanton this afternoon. But for the time being, let's concentrate on a very impressive success here for trainer John Joe O'Neill. Coral's dream, a very easy winner. Who begins to make ground now. Mad Militant follows this. Walk that walk is well out of it with Venture Forth and Trata Rear. Inside the final two and a half furlongs now. Military expert towards the outside got the call by just a battle length from Coral's dream who begins to make ground towards the leader. They're clear then by about a length and a half from personal hazard begins to drop back mad militant making ground into the home straight and a furlong and a half left to go military expert on the rails from coral stream these two clear then from mad militant and after this one coach in and it's coral stream who comes through to take it up now as they race past the furlong marker and coral stream who quickly goes two to three clear and racing down well inside the final furlong it's coral stream going further and further clear coral streams turned into a procession up towards the line coral stream the very easy winner from military expert mad militant and coach in first number one coral's dream six to one second number eight military expert five to one and third number three mad militant at